Yeah, this is Double S Shot Scales. And this is Big B from Brick Scope Productions. And you watching Heritage, Heritage Hip Hop. Heritage Hip Hop. Like, share, and subscribe, man. All day. Represent. We got your for back, career. You know it. Peace and blessings and welcome back to Heritage Hip Hop where we introduce you to your future favorite artist today and today we have a veteran whose name precedes himself in different aspects of life. Introduce yourself to the people please. Well, I'm Double S Shot Skills. You know what I mean? Let me ask you a question. <clears throat> I mean, let's just break the ice. Me and you have a history with each other, so right. a lot of these questions and things I already know. So as right. a journalist, I have to form the questions in a way like I don't know you or to introduce you to people. I'm cool with that. So what part of Newark are you from? I'm from Elizabeth Avenue, 515 to be exact. Elizabeth Avenue, if you do the history of Newark, seems to be one of the best kept secrets and the underground treasure trove of history in not only New Jersey hip hop, but Nork itself. Tell me about Elizabeth Ave and what made it, what made it the special place that it is to you? Well, you know, ever since I could know myself, I, that's where I lived at, you know what I mean? All of my life, I was uh, actually born in Jersey City, but at three months old, we moved to Nork. And so all I ever remember is you know what I mean? Elizabeth Avenue, North New Jersey. Um, it was a very affluent area uh, in the 70s. You know what I mean? I was born in 1970, so we was there in the 70s. You know what I mean? And it was a nice area. A lot of nice people, a lot of um, just different types of people that were successful in different things. I think it was probably classified as middle class at that time, back then, and, you know. Elizabeth Avenue was a, was a, uh, it's right by the highway, like, it's right by a lot of things that you need to get to, so a lot of people have to come through there, you know what I mean? It's a high traffic area. Right. And with that park being there. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> kids, the hangout spot, after hours, even midnight hours, that area stayed busy. Yeah, for sure. Tell me about what it was like developing as a man in that area and how you found music in that area? Uh, anything in that area, man, is like, it's very gritty and hardcore and very competitive. In some ways positive and of course, you know, sometimes it branch out to the negative as well, but it just, just was very aggressive and as far as music, um, we live in, we lived in a community based type of setting, you know what I mean, where it's like, like the projects, I, I called us the projects with different color buildings, because you know, the, pro the, the buildings yeah. is not all the same, like the projects, but you know, when you got buildings that tall, taller than projects, you know, my building was 28 stories, you know what I mean, another one 26, another one 25, you got all these buildings that big in one area, you're going to have a lot of people, you know what I mean, and it, it was just so many different choices you had as far as looking at people and inspiring to do things based upon what you've seen, you know, that was around you. So like you say, it was a heavy traffic area. It just seemed like everybody came through there, man. What was the music like in that area from your childhood, though? In my childhood, to keep it a buck, you know, we here mainly talking about hip hop or whatever, but when I was growing up, it definitely was hip hop, but they loved the club music as well. It was just different genres of music, you know what I mean, from the funkadelic, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, as I heard you speak about in other interviews, you know, um, when I was saying the community-based part, like you had so many different mothers and parents and fathers out there that uh, we just really listened to all different types of music, man, whether it was reggae, you no, know, no matter what it was, it really wasn't just one music, to be honest with you, as far as what I experienced. That's interesting because when you look at the area, like you talk about the buildings, mm -hmm. y'all were little cities inside of structures. <laughs> nah, because I mean, every building had an identity. Like, the only building I know about for sure is 440. Right. 440 had its own identity. Shout out to the four. 
You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they had the preschool in there. And, you know, that's part of how I got introduced to the area because of the job. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy because I ain't even meet you from that. But <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> but 440 had its own community. You said 515. They had yeah. its own community. I was part of both. I was one of them type of cats. But go ahead. The thing about Elizabeth Ave that um kind of perplexes me goes to the street life of it. Right. Because... Like I said, that park holds so many stories. Yes, it and does. if you are from the area, not only is that park a lands a landmark in the city, that park also was a place where men got checked and also men got made. Yeah. What can you say about that? Uh, like I said, it, it, it's a rough area, man. It, it's rough. You know what I mean? The rough things that happen in life. Happened down there. You had to fight for years. You had to learn how to fight. You wasn't going to be outside if you couldn't fight because it, it just was going to come. Whether it was inside your own community or sometimes we had to fend the community, meaning ward people off. So it's going to be, it's more than likely going to be some type of altercation. And you know, your spirit just need to be ready to understand that that you know this the environment that you're in you might be blessed with nothing happens to you at all but i know you're gonna wind up being aware about the possibilities the fight that i want to focus on isn't about survival because we're going to celebrate life right now no doubt no problem and the only only aspect i want to hear about is the fight to become rather than the fight to survive Right. And becoming this respected person in music, you had to be introduced to music. Right. And I remember a time you told me about going in the house because Mr. Magic was coming on. Oh, yeah. Tell me about those days and what did Mr. Magic do for you? I mean, for me, like I said, I was raised up in the 70s. Um, so I kind of seen hip hop as it came from just being underground to, you know what I'm saying, being mainstream and all of that stuff. So, um, it was just, it was just I, re I still remember the day, man, being in the park and Curtis Blow, These Are The Bricks came on and somebody just must have pleaded about 12 times in a row. We just, we just lost our mind over that, you know what I mean? We, we liked it music and as we started to get older, we started to realize that we could partake in it, you know what I mean? And, it was on, um, if you went to the schools like Peshan and Carver, it was always fashion shows, always things going on. So, you know, when I was coming up, it was like, it was the prime atmosphere for those who may want to um, get into exercising their talent, such as music and dancing and different things along the talent level and entertainment level. That's why I think hip hop in North is so old, under, underrated and overlooked. Because when hip hop got big in North, that's when they had the parades and the step shows. Barringer and everybody would come outside, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I mean, that's when, that's when everybody came outside. And that's usually when people met up and started to battle or at least introduce themselves and tell people I rap too. What was your first rap? Was it? A beatbox? Was it a a, a, a a session with somebody knocking on a lunchroom table? What was it on a block? What, what did you exercise your first right? It was deep, man. I gotta give a shout out and a rest in peace to my boy Andre Allen, who we called Chilio at the time. Man, how I got into ramen uh, was like this. Um, one day my pops came home. He he had some dough on him. He's like, "Yo, come with me to the store." I'm a little shorty, you know what I'm saying? We go in this record store and he like, yo, whatever you want, you could get. And he, he explaining the whatever you want part. Like he really wanted me to understand, like you need to make some sharp decisions. Cause like, I got you, but I'm only rock off of what you bringing out. So to make a long story short, man, he bought me some turntables. I used to scratch. I used to just mimic what other DJs did. I ain't had none of my own stuff. I just did what everybody did, man. But my man Chilio, like I told you, the competitiveness about where we lived that he was my man. We could we played Monopoly, we played game, we played Atari, we went at it with everything, man. And this this cat wrote a rap one day. You know what I'm saying? And I'm DJing. And, but he wrote a rap. And I immediately like 
even though he my man and I ain't really trying to take him out, I like, I wanted to write a rap and, and but be the best one. Mm -hmm. And from the first time I ever wrote a rap, man, I fell in love with the feeling and it was on since then. So I know this kind of going back to an earlier question, but that's what gave you the drive to like, when Mr. Magic and those things, type of things start coming on, rap started evolving. And you know, you had the Cool G raps and the KRS ones of the world. I loved it so much that when I knew that rap was coming on, I'm running in the house. Cause I was inspired, especially if I hear something new, I get inspired. So it's funny, as an MC, I grew up wanting to take everybody out, but in all reality, I love all MCs cause we all inspire each other. You know what I mean? And it's from even hearing others that keep me to where it's 2021, I still do it. And if you know any of my family, man, mostly everybody that's ever been around me, they can rap. My sons can rap, my cousins can rap. Everybody in the family can do it. I'm glad you said that because community is a big part of what makes hip hop, hip hop. Because community shapes the life of hip hop. Like, think about it. You just said when you were younger, you heard Curtis Blow. These are the breaks. Curtis Blow was the ladies' man. So when he came out, the ladies was out. You know what I'm saying? But Norton had a street life. And there was street life that affected the hip-hop circle in Nork as well. Because then, like I always said in my studies, Run DMC. Mm -hmm. I don't remember Curtis Blow being big in Nork. I remember him being catchy. Yeah. But I remember Run DMC. And then I remember when Raw came out with that did. And I'm talking about Big Daddy, Big Daddy can't yet, oh, yes. and, then, and then my melody came out from Rakim. Oh yeah. Tell me how hip hop affected you when Raw came out and my melody came out, and what was the the pulse and temperature of the city back then? Oh man, at that time, by the time by the time Raw came out, I mean we we was full fledged into it. As far as my experiences and the people I was running around, we was totally serious at that time. And um, thank God I actually had an instance with Kane before, but by the time Kane ever came, some of us was even actually feeling like we better than some of them at that time, just being honest with you, man. No disrespect to nobody, but when I'm telling you we was loving this craft, we love the craft, man. So, you know, in life when I actually did run around these cats, man, I run with them and then never was no problem. Like it was, it was always like, yo, you just as nice. You know what I'm saying? And that gave me a certain confidence that I even admit egotistical to some point because, you know, I really knew how to rap good. Check this out. Because this bothers me when it comes to these conversations. We already know that Jersey has a stigma to it when it comes to hip hop. Right. And it was fed by the Sugar Hill Gang story. Right. The people from New York came and Jersey was wild. Right. I want to ask you this, from an MC standpoint that came from Jersey, right. what was Nork's identity when it came to hip hop, especially when you had Jersey City there and then New York City itself there? Um, from what I always experienced was, it was like a gift and a curse. Like Nork was just always known for like, mostly every MC that rock out of there could really rock but you know everybody ain't make it far as like when you looking back or whatever the case may be but Nook definitely known for having like very talented MCs man I listen to your other in interviews and the brothers that you be interviewing from Nook what they be saying I be agreeing with you know while I'm here I want to shout out Double Up you know what I'm saying and Freaker thanks for the love that y'all showed you know what I'm saying on y'all interviews I want to end this part of the interview off with this. Camaraderie is what builds your name. But lyrics build your reputation. What was bigger in the city, having a name or having a reputation? He's speaking. Oh, how you doing, sir? Um, hmm. In my experience, it is both. I, I can't separate the two. I, I was a, I was coming for both angles. I wanted it. I wanted it all. You know what I mean? When it, when it um, came to that, I wanted to be known as that cat. That you know what I mean? He get busy. 
You know what I mean? And, and of course, that's gonna give you a name. You know what I mean? You wanted to be when you stepped up on the set, people already knew what it was. If it's just one person that know you, uh, yo, there go skills. Like, you know what I mean? And so that's what we, that's what I strove for and the people that I was around. Thank you for watching our presentation. We ask that you subscribe to our YouTube family and hit the notification bell for updates. Please like, comment, and share this video.